Welcome to Electron Line. One of the best ways to figure out what a derivative is, is to relate it to the slope of a function. So here I have a quadratic equation. Let's say that the, the function is y equals x squared. Of course, the, the vertex here is at the origin, the zero, zero point on the x-y axis. And you can see that I picked two points on the graph, point P and point Q. And let's say that I also drew a tangent line at the point P. Now we can see that the slope of the tangent line equals the slope of the function at point P because at that point, the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is exactly equal to the slope of the function. So how can I find the slope of a function, let's say y equals x squared? I could figure out what the slope is at P by trying to figure out what the slope of the tangent line is or I can find it in a more general way. I can find the slope of the entire function anywhere along the function and that will be a function in itself. So in other words, the slope of a function will be another function called the derivative. So the derivative will be another function that helps me find the slope anywhere along this line. And I'm going to show you how to do that. This is a very classic way. Any textbook will show you how to do this. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to find the slope between P and Q, which is equal to the slope of the secant line, which is almost equal to the slope of the tangent line. You say, well, wait a minute. Why would you find the slope of the secant line? Because it's not the same, but stay with me for a little while there because you'll see what we're trying to do here. So to find the slope of the secant line, I can say that this point P has the x-coordinate, let's call it just x, any value for x, and then the y-coordinate of that point P will be the function evaluated at x, so we call that f of x. Then we move a slight amount of distance to the right. Now I say, well, slight amount of distance, isn't Q very far to the right compared to P? Well, yes it is, but we drew it that way so you can easily see it, but imagine them to be fairly close together. So what we can then say is that the x-coordinate of q is just a small little distance away from x. A small distance, a small change in x, we'll call that a delta x. So here this would be at x plus delta x, where delta x is a very small quantity. So imagine that the value for x is equal to 5, and the value of delta x is 0.1, so this would be 5.1, so it's a small distance away from 5. Of course, if the function evaluated at x is equal to f of x, the function evaluated at x plus delta x would then be called f evaluated at x plus delta x. So that would be the y value at q, this is the x value at q, and this is the y value at q. So now I'm going to find the slope of the secant line. Remember the definition of the slope. The slope is equal to the ratio of the rise divided by the run. So if I go from the point P to the point Q, how far did I move to the right? That's called the run. How far do I go up? That's called the rise. And the ratio of the rise divided by the run is equal to the slope. That means it's equal to the change in the y values of those two points divided by the change in the x values. Now to find the change in the y values, it would be the difference between these two values. So it would be equal to the function evaluated at x plus delta x minus the function evaluated x. That would be the change in the y value between the point P and the point Q. And of course the change in x value would simply be that delta x. So this distance right here is simply the delta x. This distance right here would be considered the function evaluated x plus delta x minus the function evaluated at x. And so then I would divide this by delta x. So there you see that would be the slope of the secant line. But then you say, well, the slope of the secant line is not really the slope of the tangent line. I can really see the difference between the two. Well, to remedy that, what we can do is we can make delta x smaller. What if we move the point Q a little bit closer? So instead of having the point Q there, I'm going to move the point Q to this location right here. Now when I draw a line between those two points, notice that the slope of that line, when I move Q in closer, is much closer to the slope of the tangent line but not quite yet good enough. Okay, what I can do next is I can move the point Q even closer, move it to this point right here. Now you can see that the slope of the secant line here is again much closer to the slope of the tangent line. So if I want to make the slope of the secant line equal to the slope of the tangent line, or at least really, really close to the slope of the tangent line, I need to keep moving the point Q in closer and closer and closer in such a way that delta x becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. 
And I can then see that in the limit, and there's a term limit, if we let delta x go to a very, very small number, when it approaches zero, then of course the slope of the secant line will equal the slope of the tangent line. So the slope of the secant line, so the slope, I should say the slope of the tangent line, would then be equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of this quantity f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. But now you're going to say, well, that poses a problem. Notice that delta x goes to zero and delta x is in the denominator, so what you're asking me to do here is to allow the delta x, the denominator, to go to zero, and when the denominator becomes zero, hmm, that means it's undefined. Not exactly, because as delta x gets very small, the numerator gets very small as well. So you get a very small number divided by a very small number. Where does that converge to? So remember, it's in the limit as we approach zero, there will be a limit to this ratio. And that's what we're trying to find, because by definition, this is defined as the derivative. So the derivative of this function, the derivative, which again, because remember, the derivative is defined as the slope of the function, and the slope is defined by this quantity right here. So therefore, this is the definition of the derivative. So we can say the derivative is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of the function evaluated x plus delta x minus the function evaluated x divided by delta x. All right, now let's go back to the function. Remember, the function here was y equals x squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the function at x plus delta x, subtract from that the function evaluate x, and divide it by delta x, and then take the limit as delta x goes to zero. So this therefore is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of the function evaluated at x plus delta x, which means we're going to plug in an x plus delta x for every x and see what we get. So in this case, that would be x plus delta x quantity squared. So this would be the function evaluated at x plus delta x. I replace every x by x plus delta x, and of course then x squared becomes x plus delta x squared. From that, I subtract the function, which is simply x squared, because that's what the function is, and then I divide that by delta x, and then I let delta x go to zero, and that will give me the slope of this function, which means it gives me the derivative of that function. All right, so let's work this out and see what we get. So this is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero. When we multiply this, we get x squared plus two times x times delta x plus delta x quantity squared minus x squared, all divided by delta x. All right, so what I've done now is I've multiplied this out to get this minus x squared still divided by delta x. Now notice we have an x squared here and we have an x, a minus x squared there, so those cancel out, which leaves me with the following quantity. This is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of 2x delta x plus delta x quantity squared divided by delta x. Now notice every term in the numerator has a delta x I have a delta x in the denominator, which means I can divide the denominator into the numerator, which gives me the limit as delta x goes to zero of 2x plus delta x. Now notice there's no longer any delta x in the denominator, which means I don't have to worry about letting delta x go to zero because I don't have to worry about dividing by zero. And when I let delta x go to zero, this will go to zero, and I'm simply left with 2x. And this then becomes the slope of the function. It also is then what we call the derivative of the function. Because remember, the derivative of the function and the slope of the function is the same thing. But now notice the derivative is equal to 2 times x. It's not a number. It's not like the number 5 or the number 10 or the number 1. It's, it's a function in itself. In other words, in this case, the derivative of the function, the derivative, is equal to 2x. It's a function in itself. It also depends on x, which means as I pick different values for x, I will get different values for the, the derivative, therefore different values for the slope. 
You can see if I let x equal to 0, 2 times 0 is 0. That means right here when x is equal to 0, notice that my slope is 0. It's right at the bottom of my parabola, and the slope at that point would be 0. So that means that my derivative when x equals 0 is 0. That means my slope of the function when x is 0 is equal to 0. If I let x equals 1, maybe over here somewhere, I go up here, then notice my slope is equal to 2. 2 times 1 would be 2. So when x equals 1, the slope is 2. When x equals 2, the slope is 4. When x equals 3, the slope is 6. When x equals to negative 1, the slope is negative 2. So that comes over here. Let me draw this this way. There we go. So when x equals, let's say that we have negative 1 over here, notice at that point the slope is a negative 2. So really what this is telling me is that the derivative of a function, which we can find in this fashion right here, using the... the the, what we call the definition of a limit, we can then find the slope of the function, meaning the slope of the function, which is the derivative of the function, which tells me the slope anywhere along the function. Wow! So that's what it means. The derivative is the slope of the function, which is often a function in itself. All we have to do is plug in a value for the variable and it tells me what the slope is at that particular point on the function. That hopefully will give you a nice insight as to what a derivative is. Now, that's not the only way to think about a derivative, so there'll be lots more videos coming up that show you different ways of looking at the meaning of the derivative and how to calculate it. So, if you like this, stay tuned. We'll show you lots more stuff about what a derivative is.